All right, it's my pleasure to introduce Uppala. She is a PhD candidate from Auburn University working under Dr. Tim Bruce and Dr. Alan Davis. Uh, the research is focused on the impacts of dietary supplements on growth and health of aquatic species grown in bioflock integrated aquaponic systems. They're investigating the microbiome of fish, fecal matter, water, and root systems, and conducting pathogen challenge studies to examine the effects of dietary supplements. So take it away. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So you heard a little about me, and now let's listen to a little about my project. So I'm Utpala Padenia, and I'm a PhD candidate from uh, Dr. Bruce's lab. And today I'm going to present to you about the influence of yeast products on growth and disease resistance of bioflock red uh, Nile tilapia. Tilapia is uh, farmed worldwide, and it is one of the most produced uh, fish species, again, worldwide. Out from tilapia, Nile tilapia is one of the most popular species in aquaculture. And over the years, uh, the production of Nile tilapia as well as all the other tilapias have increased. And uh, Nile tilapia is the third most abundantly farmed fin fish. And the largest producer countries are mainly from Asia with uh, also Egypt and Brazil. But uh, the production of tilapia in US is a bit different. As you can see from this graph, it's a bit uh, decreasing uh, during these years. So uh, tilapia are known for its hardness and also it's a fast growing fish. It's uh, a tropical species, but it can be raised in subtropical regions too. Uh, it is also resistant to many common pathogens, but there are some um, bacterial uh, pathogens which causes diseases. And one of the most uh, commonly found disease in tilapia is streptococcosis, which is uh, uh, infected by uh, the pathogen streptococcus species. And it uh, causes millions of uh, losses to tilapia production. And some of the other emerging uh, diseases are francisilosis, columnaris, and motile uh, aeromonas septicemia. And in my uh, trial, we are focusing on columnaris disease. So uh, the columnaris causing bacteria uh, can be divided into four genetic groups. And I'm focusing on uh, the fourth uh, genetic group, which belongs to uh, flavor bacterium oreochromis because it is the uh, bacterial pathogen which causes diseases to uh, tilapia. And it is a gram-negative uh, slen slender filamentous bacterium. More into the columnaris disease, it's a mixobacterial disease and it's known for its saddleback lesions and fin rods and uh, black patch necrosis. And the distribution of this uh, disease is worldwide. So for the control and prevention, uh, disinfection methods uh, such as uh, addition of formalin, addition of salt can be done. And also uh, with good biosecurity practices, this disease can be controlled. And a uh, um, novel way of uh, controlling and preventing this disease is the use of probiotics. So probiotics are live microorganisms with uh, different beneficial characteristics, and they are they can be used to increase growth, health, and also the gut health in fish. And most of the time, uh, back, different bacterial species are used as probiotics like bacillus, lactobacillus, but uh, the use of yeast or Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a very new method. And in um, this trial, we use uh, fermented yeast products as a probiotic. It contains uh, the cell walls, which contains beta-glucans, which are immunostimulants. And also they have other cell-soluble materials, which enhances growth, humoral, and cellular immune responses in fish. So before moving into my... Uh, trial that I'm going to present to you today. I want to uh, point out some of uh, our previous trials with commercial probiotics. 
uh, we supplied uh, some commercial probiotics as dietary supplements to Nyethilapia, again reared in Bioflux systems. And from the results of a pathogen study uh, that we did uh, after challenging them with Streptococcus inae, we showed some interesting results as uh, the commercial probiotics increased the resistance against uh, Streptococcus uh, infected by Streptococcus inae. And moving on to my experimental design, it was done in EW Shell Fishery Station at Auburn University. And the fish culture system was a biofloc aquaponic system in a greenhouse setting. Uh, nine cylindrical tanks uh, with a working volume of 1,000 gallons were used. And each tank uh, was stocked with 190 fish per tank. Sampling was done biweekly to adjust the feed amounts and the trial period ran for 16 weeks. At the end of the trial, fish were weighed, weighed and counted for growth, and also uh, blood, spleen, and kidney were extracted from three fish per tank for lysozyme activity and also to uh, for gene, immune gene expression. The water quality parameters of this study was uh, kept at their acceptable levels, and three treatments were given to this fish in three replicates. The first uh, treatment was a control, and the second one where we incorporated the control with DV aqua, uh, and the third one where, again, the control were um, incorporated with Nutritech. This DV aqua and Nutritech were supplied by Diamond V Mills, and they, are, they contain uh, a fermented ye yeast product which acts as a probiotic, and the inclusion rates of each uh, ingredient is given in this table. And all these diets uh, were prepared by Optimal Aquafeed. And after the feeding trial, which carried uh, for, for about 16 weeks, we subjected uh, some of the fish for a pathogen challenge. So the a schematic diagram of the pathogen challenge is shown in this uh, slide where 15 fish from each uh, treatment were challenged uh, challenged, and each uh, treatment had three replicates and also each treatment had one mock control. And uh, the pathogen that were used uh, was Flavobacterium oreochromis, which is the R1827 strain. And uh, the challenge type was the immersion challenge and the dosage, the OD, and the challenge duration uh, is given in this uh, table. At the end of the challenge, uh, cumulative percent mortality was measured, and also uh, re-isolation of the pathogen were done from 20% of the mortalities. Uh, blood were again collected for serum lysozyme activity, and spleen and kidney were collected from the remaining fish for immune gene expression. So we uh, tested uh, the expression of four genes, IL-1 beta, TNF-alpha, TLR-2, uh, and uh, NOT-1. Uh, all these are um, immune genes which are responsible uh, for regulation of um, many immune-related activities such as phagocytosis and pro-regulation uh, of inflammation and also carrying out antibacterial and antiviral processes. Uh, this table shows the results of the growth parameters, uh, and we tested uh, growth in different ways, final biomass, mean weight, weight gain, uh, gain, weight gain percent, FCR, and survival. And none of these parameters showed any significant differences between the treatments. But uh, when we uh, challenge the fish with this pathogen, R1827 strain, we see very interesting uh, results where uh, the control fish had the highest mortalities, uh, which rounded up to 73%. And then uh, the fish that were treated with Nutritech had 24% mortalities. And then uh, the fish uh, which were treated with DV aqua had 22% uh, mortality. So this shows that there's a significant difference 
between the control and the uh, diets which had fermented yeast products. And again, uh, this is the Kaplan-Meier survival analysis, which gives another way of presenting uh, the survival data in uh, this, from this analysis too, uh, we could see that um, the control and the treatments which had um, the fermented yeast products or the probiotic had higher survival rates than the control. When we tested uh, the fish for serum lysozyme activity uh, in the different time points, pre-challenge and post-challenge, uh, no differences were found between the treatments or between different time points. Uh, there is the same pattern went with the gene expression for spleen, where we found no differences in um, between treatments or between uh, the different time points. But when we uh, looked into the gene expression of the kidney, we found that uh, the gene not one uh, had uh, the pre-challenge, uh, there, there was a significant difference between different time points where in post-challenge, they had higher expression than in pre-challenge. And when we looked into the um, toll-like toll -like receptor 2 in kidneys, again, uh, uh, there were significant differences, but uh, the interaction was significant, so uh, we analyzed them separately. So when we analyzed the data separately, the pre-challenge didn't have any differences, but uh, during the post-challenge, uh, the expression of genes were uh, very high, in uh, the treatments which had uh, the probiotics uh, than the control. So as conclusion from all these results, we can conclude that the su uh, supply of uh, fermented yeast products had no influence on growth parameters and it had a uh, resistance when infected with uh, flavor bacterium oreochromis. Uh, and it had no influence on the serum lysozyme activity, uh, but the gene expression in kidney was influenced. So finally, I would like to thank uh, USDA for funding my project and also uh, Dr. Esteban Soto for supplying the R1827 strain. And also my advisors, Dr. Timothy Bruce and Dr. Alan Davis and all my lab members. Uh, for supporting uh, throughout my project. Thank you. Great, thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Folks, we've got about two minutes for questions. If anybody has them, feel free to unmute yourself or drop them into the chat. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Utpal. Uh, nice presentation. So I wonder, uh, can you please explain the process of birth immersion, how you did? Okay. So uh, can I go back to my slide? Yep. Okay, uh, so what we did was uh, we set the um, bacterial OD to the OD that we uh, like normally require. And then uh, we challenged them with uh, 75 mils of the uh, inoculum. So we did pilot studies before that to obtain the right volume that we need. And that was the volume uh, which we found that it had a good uh, mortality. So uh, after taking the 75 mils, then we reduced the tank volume to 10 liters and closed the flow rate and uh, pour the bacterial inoculum into the tank and immerse the fish for 30 minutes. And after that, we... Uh, so the, our system is a flow through system. So we, again, after 30 minutes incubation, uh, we open the flows and that
that's how we basically did our emotion challenge. And that's nice. And uh, I have another question. So uh, you saw, uh, so you saw that the Taylor two activity activity is significant uh, significantly induced. Yes. So have you ever tested the downstream molecule of TLR two like? MYD88 or NF kappa B activity, something like that. So we haven't done any downstream like applications on them yet, because uh this is a very recent study that we did, but uh we can look into it. Okay, okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for the questions. Great, thank you, Paula. There's another question in the chat that if you can respond there, that would be great, and we'll move on to the next presentation.